California union members could soon receive tax credits to reimburse a portion of their dues payments under Assembly Bill 158 that's awaiting the governor's signature. Here to help us break down the bill is the president of the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, John Copal. Hey, John, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Well, you know, I'm, I, I sometimes, as I read this prompter, just start shaking my head. I, I, can you correct me if I'm wrong? I, I thought there was already a tax break for union dues. Sure. It's uh, under existing law in California, it is deductible, but not a full tax credit. And that's the difference. A full tax credit is very, very generous tax, uh, tax break. It's uh, something that's not offered in any other state. And, you know, your previous story was on the inflation uh, relief checks going out. Uh, well, this is just another example like that story uh, of buying votes. Uh, you know, the state of California has perfected to an art form the ability to go out and grant checks and, and certain benefits to certain favored political groups. And, uh, it, it, you know, again, um, at the at the federal level, we see this. Uh, as well with the student loan re, uh, relief. So, you know, I, I, I'm, regrettably, progressives are really good at going out there and finding ways to financially benefit their favored constituents. And who's left at the station is uh, ordinary taxpayers. Well, I mean, uh, my, my email fills up every time I say this, but, I, you know, I, I'm at the age I don't care anymore. The ancestral relationship between the progressive political party and unions, it, it, it has to be severed somehow because it, it just is this vicious circle where policy is created. Like now, we're supposedly we're trying to help out the uh, low income uh, union worker by making right. low income non union workers help pay for their dues, which blows me away. It doesn't. It's so obvious, and yet people will just keep pulling the lever for the for the left, left and right. Yeah, well, the, the, the reality is there, um, uh, the, there are people, taxpayers, ordinary taxpayers in the state of California are leaving California in fairly significant numbers. So, um, you know, this, this gravy train cannot continue indefinitely. So um, we'll just see how it all shakes out. But I do think, interestingly enough, this story was reported in the Sacramento Bee, which is certainly not a bastion of uh, conservative journalism. And if you look at the comments, most of the comments were very negative on this from people saying, I'm not getting this benefit. How come, how come the state of California is thinking about doing this? So what's the salute? I mean, unless people change their uh, voting pattern, this, this is just will keep spinning faster and faster and faster. Because uh, the, the obvious idea is that this union money ends up in the pockets of progressive candidates as they run for election and re-election and then they in right. turn create policy favorable to the unions who are funding them and it it's just one big ugly circle it, it, it is but keep in mind that we have 50 states under our system of federalism states are competing against each other and right now we see this huge exodus of businesses and taxpayers moving out of the state of california and in fact i think gavin newsom is somewhat embarrassed by Ron DeSantis and, and other governors uh, making fun of California and the number of people who are moving out. So I think this experiment of high taxation versus low taxation, look, even in Arizona, they had a flat tax rate of like 2%, but they're even phasing that out to zero. And yet California has the highest marginal income tax rate in America at 13.3%. This is not sustainable over the long term. And I think eventually people are gonna w wake up Either that, or they're going to move out of the state of California. John, whenever I have this argument with my liberal friends, they, they come right back at me and say, well, it's no different than conservatives being funded by private corporations and, and in turn make policy that is favorable to private corporations. What would, what would you say to that? Well, I think any kind of policy needs to be judged on, under fairness and, and, and equity. But certainly, if your long-term goal is um, economic rejuvenation, you look at uh, a favorable business climate, that helps everybody. Uh, but these targeted benefits and targeted giveaways to specific political groups is a lot different than broad-based policies that, uh, are, that end up helping everyone. I mean, um, we're, we're, we're seeing right now with inflation and stagflation, 
uh, the consequences of progressive economic policies. And I think the, the this coming November, there's going to be a rude awakening uh, on the part of progressives with a, a significant shift back toward the center. And um, so we'll just see if that happens. And I think that could realign some people's thinking. And I have seen some actions by this governor that look a little bit more moderate than have been in the past. For example, his decision to keep the Abu Canyon uh, nuclear power plant open. And he also green-lighted some additional gas-fired, natural gas-fired election right. uh, electrical generation. So we'll see. All right, John, thank you for making time for KUSI this early in the morning. You bet. Have Take a safe care. day.